Just a quick note in post-production, this is not your typical how to install video. Things didn't quite go according to plan, we did resolve it, but I will have to caution you, it's not a step-by-step. -step. But please, enjoy anyhow, thanks. Today on the SN95 Owner's Guide, we're going to talk about upgrading your fuel system, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome. I'm Darren and this is the SN95 Owner's Guide, the series where we talk about SN95 Mustangs, V6, 5 liter, 4.6 and beyond. And today we're going to be covering the fuel system on my own 1995 Mustang GTS and what it can do for you. It should come as no surprise that the SN95 is getting a little bit old. It's getting a little bit long in the tooth and some of the factory components are starting to reach the end of their service life. And there's nothing that is more pressing than the fuel system under hood of your 5 liter Mustang. The factory system uses two nylon and plastic coated lines. And these lines, as they got old, they tend to break and they're brittle. And it's what happens is when they leak, of course you end up with fires. This was a huge problem around 2008. It was all over the corral and a few guys lost their cars, which even if you have a small fire, it's a big problem. So those guys working with the performance aftermarket were able to come up with a long-term solution in the way of some custom fittings and some braided lines. Now my own car, is indeed a 1995. It is supercharged and it is still using the factory fuel lines. And this is something of a concern for me because this car doesn't have very good insurance coverage because even if you burn one to the ground, you're not going to get paid out what you want. You're not going to get out any of your parts and face it, total loss is gonna be a huge loss to both your pocketbook and your performance hobby. So with mine is what I've done is I've gathered the necessary parts, which includes a set of pre-made Fragola lines, some fittings, which will be covered in the part list below. And I'm going to set to work showing you how to change your own system so you can prevent fires on your own car. Let's get to that. Now, if you've never looked under the hood of your car, what's wrong with you? But if you have and you're not sure where the fuel lines are, there is a lot of stuff going on. The fuel lines are located over on the passenger side. They start down here by the firewall. This is where the hard lines come in. And then they move across, usually under your inlet system or cold air kit. Then they'll sweep across the valve cover and enter the fuel rails again on the passenger side of the engine. My car does have a Kenny Bell supercharger in the way, but yours will have a, at least a cast aluminum intake manifold or some other thing that will make this area a little bit more crowded than you'd like it to be. But don't worry, this isn't a big problem. We'll be able to get in there and access what we need to do. But before we take parts off, let's take a look at the parts that we're going to put in. So here are the basic parts of the system. I know they're hard to see because I've selected black parts, but you can get these in any number of anodized coatings. It all depends on the manufacturer. You'll see the part numbers here. These ones are subject to change. I know when I first researched this about five years ago, the part numbers have evolved. So the important thing is at the end of the video, in the description box, you will be able to find a list of what these parts are, their numbers, and a description of exactly what you're looking for. For example, this is a dash six to five sixteenths SAE quick detach. This will help you find the parts if these numbers ever become obsolete or get superseded. But it's what we have is we have both a supply and a return line for the fuel rail side. Then we have a fuel supply and return adapter to the metal hard lines. Those are the ones that are up by the firewall that we discussed. Then here we have two dash six pre-made nicely coated lines. You can make your own dash six lines and you can even go up to dash eight. Size your fuel system appropriate to the horsepower level you're looking to generate. For my own purposes, dash eight is more than enough. And finally, let's talk a little bit about tooling. You will need fuel line disconnect tools. If you've never used these before, Take a look at the ends. If they are squared off, you're gonna to wanna to shave a chamfer into them. Otherwise, they won't work very well at all. But you'll need some sort of set. I suggest practicing them. Now, before you get going, we will be working with the fuel system. It's very important to have the engine cool to the touch and to have some sort of fire suppression system nearby. Ideally, a fire extinguisher that is rated to deal with petrochemicals. Because a fire, if you start it while working on your vehicle, is no better than the fire that happened roadside from the problem that you're trying to fix in the first place. The first thing to do is, of course, unhook your battery, 
Discharge your fuel system using the Schrader valve. You'll see that at the end of the fuel rail, again, on the passenger side. You can simply depress that just like a bicycle tire and let out some, let out the fuel. Have some rags around to mop it up and be sure to take care of those in a safe way. Once you've got the fuel system discharged, we can begin unhooking our fuel line system. And the choice is up to you. You can either start at the firewall or you can start up at the fuel rail. Regardless of which one you choose, it all has to come out. So the choice is entirely yours. So with the fuel line disconnected back at the firewall and our overview done, it's just a matter of removing the old parts using a fuel line disconnect tool up at the rail and getting things out of your way so you can start putting the new parts back in. Be persistent, use some WD-40 or other lubricant and these things will slide off. They can be a bit stubborn. Once you've got it free, simply fish the fuel line out through and you can take a look at it. You can see where the routing is and you can choose an alternate one if you like it this time or you can try and chase the original pathway. With the fuel line adapter for your rail, your dash 6 or your dash 8, whatever you've chosen to use, be sure to put a little bit of grease on the O-rings to help them go in. They can be a little bit stubborn, but make sure they twist and push on and they will go. Now, this is where I want to set my adapter, the firewall, onto the hard line. And this is where everything was going according to plan, when suddenly there was a problem. This guy. This little piece right here is way too thick. There's two barbs on the factory fuel hard line that retain it both from slipping down too far or from slipping up, that wouldn't fit into the gap between them. So, with no parts available late in the hour, I had to resort to some drastic measures where I had to heavily thin this down using a rather rudimentary lathe. It did work. I don't recommend it for yourselves. Is what we do have to research is what the correct part number is. And that is going to be the absolute crux of this entire video, the correct part numbers. After custom modification, I was able to get the fitting onto the hard line and I was able to get it to lock down. With that done, I was able to move on with the rest of the project and look at fitting the new lines. Speaking of fitting the lines, earlier in the video you watched me install the fuel line fittings onto the rail and then attempt to attach the lines. Is what I found is this didn't work very well given the proximity of the intake manifold as well as the boost bypass on my Kenny Bell. So I had to peel that off, make some room, and I ended up removing the fittings and assembling them by hand using wrenches. This isn't a big deal, it's just a small change in the step and definitely breaks the continuity of a how-to style film, which as we discussed at the first, we're well beyond a step-by-step. -step. Sometimes things don't go smoothly in the shop. But once I got that done, it was very easy to go and clip the lines on where they needed to go, route them under the intake, and then it was time to test. Initial startup was definitely the moment of truth. I was quite worried that when I cycled the key and the fuel pump built pressure that we we're going to see nothing but fuel spraying all over the engine. But a few cycles before starting and everything looked like it held, so I started up and let it run in idle. And so far everything's good. Fuel pressure's normal, no leaks, no issues. So I call that a certain success. With everything installed and working correctly, now let's take a little look at the parts list I used and what I can suggest as alternate pieces so you don't run into the same problems I did. Starting off with the fuel lines, I used Fragola pre-made lines 60, 26, 14, 30s, which is a PTFE braided line with a nice black coating. It has a dash six straight and a angled 45 degree dash six on the other side. Of course, you can totally build your own uh, lines from bulk materials and individual connectors. One difference that I would suggest is probably only go with a 24 inch long line that should give you plenty of room to work. Mine are a little bit loopy but that's fine and also rather than doing the straight fit I would definitely suggest going with 90 degree fittings to button up near the fuel uh, hard lines where they meet the firewall. That will give you a little bit more trim of an install but aside from that that part number worked perfectly. We'll move on to the fuel rail fitting since both of those are good. That's a Russell 640 873. That's a dash 6 to 5 16 fuel rail fitting. Worked great. And its companion, the Russell 640 903. That's dash 6 to 3 8 fuel rail. Again, worked perfectly. Highly recommended. Moving back to the firewall where we ran into our troubles, the Russell 641 303. That's dash 6 to male quarter inch hardline adapter. That one worked great, highly recommend it. But the problem came with our Russell 644113, that's dash six to five sixteenths hardline. And bear in mind that I did research these part numbers from forums, various people had various builds and everyone claimed that everything fit equally. We knew that that isn't the case from my own experiences. Is what I recommend as an alternate part number is I'm going to try a Russell 640853. That's a five sixteenths quick disconnect push on 
versus the Thread-On style, and that adapts, of course, to the OEM hardline. If anyone out there has tried this and they've used whatever part numbers, please let me know in the comments and I can make updates to the video. But in the meantime, I've got that on order and I will update in the video description how things turned out once I have that data for you. But all in all, aside from the fitment issues of my exact picked part numbers, this should have and would have otherwise been a very direct install. Unhook the old lines, put in the new ones, check for leaks, good to go. Highly recommend it to anyone, despite the troubles that I had, and I definitely appreciate everyone following along to see how this all turned out, because it did start as a how-to, and it definitely devolved into a how-to-make-it-work. So, as always, thanks for watching, glad to have you along, please like, share, and subscribe, and hey, for putting up with all this, why not a little bit of bonus footage? Here is a sound, a flyby of the Kenny Bell at full chat. We'll see you next time. Later.